a senior military intelligence officer, could it be a better day uh, right. to have you here in the studio to talk about, obviously, the biggest story uh, of the day, which, of course, is events in Gaza. Now, um, very, very disturbing events. The death of any civilian is tragic and awful and shouldn't happen, but does happen in war. The death of any aid worker, particularly more tragic, because those are people who have volunteered to go to a dangerous part of the world, braver than most souls are, probably not braver than you, you've been in the military, certainly braver than people like me, um, to actually go to another country, to go to a war zone, to provide aid, to keep people alive. Desperately needed uh, humanitarian aid and food aid for the people of Gaza. But we know now that seven aid workers were killed in an Israeli airstrike. We know that three of those were British. Uh, their names have been revealed. James Henderson, John Chapman and James Kirby, all ex-British military. Now, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, has admitted that it was an IDF airstrike uh, on three different uh, vehicles in a convoy. One of those vehicles being marked clearly with the name of the charity they're working for, World Central Kitchen. World Central Kitchen have said, we notified the IDF of where we were operating. They'd been delivering aid, they just dropped off a huge amount of aid, food aid, and then they were travelling along a coastal road. Three different airstrikes, three different vehicles, Seven people killed in total. Now, um, Rishi Sunak has told Benjamin Netanyahu that he was appalled by the killing. He has said he wants a thorough and transparent independent investigation. And that is what Benjamin Netanyahu and the IDF have promised to do. Um, what do you think... What do you think the response of the, of the international community has been? Do you, what do you think of it? Do you think it's great people to be talking about being outraged, being appalled, demanding investigation? Or is this, well, something that terribly happens in wartime uh, it's a bit of everything you know it is something that terribly happens in wartime um, but you know the outrage that's been shown against this particular aid convoy you know why wasn't there outrage against other NGOs that have been killed um, in the conflict that there is, both by um, uh, Israeli I mean, strikes and by a, Hamas More well. than 100 uh, aid workers, we understand, have been killed, largely uh, Palestinian. Yeah. Some of the concerns have been that actually some of these aid workers were actually working with Hamas, yeah. but, and, and, but and we don't know. And we that's, don't know. Part, that's part of yeah. the problem. You know, undoubtedly, this is a complete and utter muck-up. Mm. Um, I would have used another word, but we're, but we're on mm. air and it's too early. Yeah. Um, uh, and the Israelis have stood up and admitted to that. Um, however, there are a few indicators in there that suggest to me that Israel needs to do some stuff about it. You know, they they need to tighten their targeting process. They had a very, very good targeting process that would have stopped this sort of thing from happening. Um, uh, uh, or they've got a unit that has ignored the process and if that's happened they then need to get in identify that and, and discipline the individuals that are responsible but it also shows that they've got a, a higher appetite for collateral damage because you know i've heard the excuses this morning that intelligence had said that there were going to be hamas fighters in that convoy and we know hamas have used ambulances before yep. we know they've used vehicles marked up for the un before um we know that there are members of some of the ngos are members of hamas mm -hmm. as well but then the question there is then were they were the aid workers who died were they collateral damage as in did they believe they were all hamas fighters and one of the reports coming out from uh, of the middle east is suggesting that they did believe there was a hamas fighter there yeah. so is that then an acceptable target because there's one hamas fighter or and, 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 the, and the aid workers are, are collateral damage, or is that still an unacceptable target in, even in wartime because of the collateral damage? What would, for instance, the British Army or the US yeah. Army from, have from, done? From, from a British perspective, um, it would be unacceptable collateral damage. So the potential for a civilian to be in the vehicle, never mind an aid worker or anything else, would mean it would be a no-strike yeah. target. Okay. However, Israel has shown the whole way through that they've got a greater acceptance of collateral damage. And that's a political decision. You know, if they had believed that there was a high price Hamas individual in the vehicle, that would make it a, a legitimate mm. military target. You then have to go into the proportionality game. And as the proportionality of the yeah. potential for collateral damage, civilians, aid workers or anything else, is that politically acceptable? Yeah. Um, if you're targeting a military target, if you believe that there's a military individual in there, then under international law, it's a legitimate target. It is a legitimate target. It is a legitimate target. So you okay. can target hospitals, but, but there, you can it, target mosques. But there if you was believe. not, but there, they, they've admitted there was not a fighter. So is it incomplete information? Well, look, I want to put out a social question on this, but I also want to, first of all, play you 
the official apology that we've had a statement from Ben Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, but we've also had a statement from the IDF, the Israel Defence Forces Chief of Staff, Herzi Halevi, apologising for the killing of aid workers. It's a bit longer than this, but these are the crucial words that he had to say. Let's have a listen and a watch. I want to be very clear. The strike was not carried out with the intention of harming WCK aid workers. It was a mistake that followed a misidentification at night during a war in a very complex conditions. It shouldn't have happened. We will continue taking immediate actions to ensure that more is done to protect humanitarian aid workers. This incident was a grave mistake. Israel is at a war with Hamas, not with the people of Gaza. We are sorry for the unintentional harm to the members of WCK. We share in the grief of their families, as well as the entire World Central Kitchen Organization from the bottom of our hearts. An independent body will investigate the incident thoroughly. We will complete it in the next coming days. Well, that was what the IDF chief of staff had to say. I, I, I mean, a full, a full apology, full acceptance of, of, of what had gone wrong. This doesn't appear to be enough for the, the international community, certainly. I say condemnation from pretty much across the board, including from uh, Joe Biden, of course, the most crucial ally, the US president uh, for uh, the Israelis. There's talk of even um, demands for a military aid to be cut off. Now, we, I think the UK provides something like less than 0.2% of, uh, of Israeli military aid. Um, but, you know, and they, they are a well-stocked country country because they, they live in a war zone as well they as well we know um but um do you think that would be an appropriate response or do you think that actually a lot of the the talk from likes of Rishi Sunak um I'm expecting a statement from David Cameron the foreign secretary very soon as well and the talk from the American president is kind of for domestic ears and is a concern about you know how this will look at, you know in the media to the general public but it's not necessarily representative of their real views, which will be an understanding that these things happen in wartime, mistakes are made. British government, American government, every government will have done something similar in their past. I, I think there's a sea change here. You know, just because something's a legitimate military target, as was describing earlier, doesn't mean you have to hit it and doesn't mean yeah. that um, you, you, you're, you're not going to achieve things by, by, not, by not hitting it. Um, there's other things that you can do, that, like continue to surveil it. And I think what we've seen is a sea change in the international support, public support for Israel. And I think the statements that are coming out from Joe Biden, from um, Rishi Sunak and all the rest of it, are clear political statements mm. aimed at Israel, not aimed at just the domestic audiences. And they're saying to Israel, look, we recognise that you might not necessarily be following the targeting processes that we've been saying you're really, really good at. You might um, have too much of an acceptance of collateral damage. You know, just because there's a fighter in there doesn't mean that you have to hit it. Okay. Start to take a little bit more care um, because you know, our political support, given the pressures that are at home, you know, is, is very fragile. And again, we're in election years. Correct. This is very crucial yes, for an awful lot of governments. Um, now, the question I want to ask you, and I really do want to hear your thoughts on this, the Prime Minister here has demanded an investigation into the Israeli strike that killed three British aid workers in Gaza. I want to know, should the UK take a tougher approach to Israel? Should they? Yes or no? I'd love to know your reasons why. Do get in touch. Uh, please uh, give us a call on 0344-499-1000. You can text us on 87222. Uh, and you can get in touch on X at Talk TV as well. Calls are charged at a national rate. Text costs one standard network rate message. I mean, my view on this is very much like this is horrific. This is a terrible act. Uh, uh, that has happened in wartime. The fog of war is terrible. We tend not to get to the truth in the fog of war. The thing is, you know, we, we've got more truth about what's going on right now, have we not, than we would get from pretty much any other government and certainly from Hamas. Israel have come out and said, we've made a horrible mistake. This shouldn't have happened. We will investigate. They've admitted it. Now, that is very, very crucial to me. That makes a very, very big difference to what is actually going on. Um, but also, Christian, do people genuinely believe that Israel went, I know what, let's target seven foreign aid workers, let's kill them really blatantly, 
okay it was not in broad daylight it was at night time they say let's do that and um, no one will care in the international community. It won't put pressure on our allies. No one will be screaming at us for being, you know, murderers. That's fine. They're not that stupid. I mean, you, even the people who really, really actively dislike the Israelis and the Israeli Defence Force and think they're committing genocide, or do they really think they're all so stupid as well as, in their belief, murderers? That's my thing. It's a terrible, awful, tragic mistake. Do you know the sad thing? I think there are people who are that daft. Yeah, um, I know there are. They've and, been and, tweeting and, and me the, this and, the, and the trouble is they're being fed by this incessant um, anti-Israeli um, and um, genocide yeah. um, feeds through news feeds and yep. some of them legitimate news feeds and through what people are picking up on social media. And of course, people only pick up on social media what they want to hear. So they've got they live what, in their echo what, what I call it, it's an echo chamber, a self-misinforming. Oh, well, I've been thing. asked at least five times this morning, you know, so who's, you know, are you in the pay of the Israeli government? No, I think what they've done yeah. is awful. But yeah. I also accept that the British government will have done this. I'm not in the pay of that government either. Yeah, exactly. And every government in, in conflict, you know, we've got the Australian um, investigation into their, their special forces and extra uh, judicial killings in yep. Afghanistan. We've got that inquiry going on inside the UK with our special forces. Yep. You look at every conflict that there is and there are blue on blue at different at, at different times and that is it's tragic, it should never happen, and the then, processes and, and, should yeah. stop it but unfortunately in war it does. Now this I think there's more to it. I think that um, having read it all around it, I think that the Israeli unit that got involved um, thought that they knew better than the processes. The processes are there to stop or minimise this sort of thing. Yep. But I think they knew better than the processes and, and got into a bit of groupthink where they believed that there were terrorists in these vehicles yeah. and not... Uh, Here's the thing, I'm, I'm really looking forward to a full apology and investigation by Hamas for all the <laughs> civilians that they've killed. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not saying one equals the other because we expect more from a democratically elected government yeah. that is our ally in, in the Middle East. Um, I, of course I expect more from them than I do from Hamas. However, you know, I, I really do think it is extraordinary that you hold Hamas to such a low account everything they do um, and then we hold uh, Israel to an account higher than we hold our own governments. Yeah and, and uh, you know all of these people that are criticizing Israel the whole way through I never see them whether they're MPs whether they are mm. um, members of the media whether they are members of the public or anything else um, even former military personnel I never see them criticizing Hamas as no. much as they criticize Israel and there's one organization started this uh, I'm afraid and it's, and it's Hamas yeah. don't dilute that with all the historical issues that people then say oh no this started you know, back in the, when Israel was formed illegally. That's, I think you have to go back 2,000 years on some Twitter threads but there exactly. we are. Well look, I do want to hear from you.